Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video about Oracle Cloud. Basically, in this video, I will go for the next step. In the last video, I show you how you can create an instance and how you can access this instance through the SSH. But this one is not enough. Let's start to install our application. The first application that we're going to install is the Docker and the portrait. Why this one? Because it's a really good application for virtualization and install a lot of containers. And in this video as well, I will show how you can install the proxy manager. This proxy manager will be really good as well because you can manage your sites to have a easy access. So it means that you don't need to use exactly the IP address for all the time. You can block all the ports from this system. I'll show you how you can access it. You can allow the trust access all the application through the HTTPS where it will use the port 443 or port 8. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show you this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's do it. Before I start to go through the installation and go all these steps, we're gonna go to the basics. Here it's my virtual machine, my instance that I have, the name of this instance is CyberLab, where I have the IP address 140.238.127 and 4174, it's an external IP. The user that I'm using is OPC, and here if I'm going down here, I'm using the Oracle Linux. Why I'm using this operating system? It's because some applications will work better with Oracle Linux and others will work better with Ubuntu. So uh, it's good to have this too. In this video, I will show how you can do the Oracle Cloud. The Ubuntu will be not so different. I already show in others video how to do in Debian, how to do in Ubuntu, the installation for the Docker. So it's not secret, it's not difficult at all. But if you guys don't know how to do it, I can show again as well. Only one core dedicated for this one. And they are work with E21M. What it means? It means that they are using an ADM CPU. I get the benchmarks only for you guys have an idea. And what I understand we are using this CPU. It's an Epic 7763. Each clock has 2.5 GHz and they have 64 cores and 128 threads. So you're using one of those cores. If I come here, as well, I'm using only one gigabyte of run memory. Some of application will be enough, some of application will be not enough. If it's not enough, we can migrate for the ARM system and that it will have more run per CPU. It means that uh, according then you can have uh, four V cores or four CPUs and uh, 24 gigabytes of run, that is plane of capacity. But in this case, I'll go for the basics and run with only 408 megabytes of uh, memory. Have this one in mind. Now we go here and look the rest of the information. We have a uh, IP address, it means that internet network with 10.0.0.38. Have everything understand? Now we can go and look in with our putty and try to access it. In the last video, I already show how you can log in it. Basically, it's use your IP address, use your SSH key that's already defined here, and we can open it. Once that uh, you open the first time that you open, they show this page. Don't worry, you're gonna put yes. And we're gonna look in as OPC, exactly the same one that show here, and we put enter. So now, first thing that we need to do is update our system. To update our system, it's quite basic, but it's a little bit different from Ubuntu because we are using the Oracle Linux, so we need to use sudo ypsilon um update. And that's they will go to all the updates, they will search all the list, and that's they will do the upgrade. So you don't need to run two different applications. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the last time that I tried to run this update from zero, they take around 10, 12 minutes. So we need to wait. But first of all, you need to wait to appear the message. All the updates has been located, and now you are sure that you want to download everything and upgrade all the system. Otherwise, if you put this one and wait and go out and 10 minutes later you come back, they will not be finished and you're gonna be disappointed. So you wait a little bit until the next step. So let's wait. Okay, to be fair, this first step take around two or three minutes, so it's not a big deal. 
So now that will go for the long step. This long step, we need to go here and put yes, enter, and that they will start to download all the configuration and start to install. Because we have only one core and uh, one gigabyte of RAM, they will take a little bit longer to install. If you look, they already download all the information, is 21 megabytes of speed download and they load 144 and 145 megabytes. Now they'll go through the installation for six, seven applications. So 10 minutes, go to get a coffee, go to the toilet, go to do everything, walk with the dog. And after this one, 10 minutes, you come back and that should be installed. So let's wait it. Perfect, after finish to update all our programs and everything, now we can clear our page. So we're gonna clear it and we're gonna start to install our Docker engine. Before we start to install our Docker engine, we're gonna run some steps. Basically, we're gonna configure some configurations. Otherwise, they don't work so well, so it's easy. Uh, don't worry, all these steps in the description, so you can follow it, copy and paste, and uh, it's easy for you. Before we start to install anything, we need to look as an uh, admin, so we're gonna go sudo su, and now we're gonna put cd. So we are running with admin allowed. So we can install all the application that you want. The first application that we want to install is this one. Run it. Then we go for the second one. Once that this one finished, it will take a little bit and run the second one, configuration. Then we go to the next one. Then we go to the next one. And we go for the next one in a second. Let's only wait. And we go for the next one. Most of them, you don't need to do anything, but it's good to run. Don't worry, it's one, two, three, four, five steps that you can run. It will take some seconds, but it's worth to do. Then we're gonna put clear and it's clear again. Now we properly can start to install the Docker engine. To do it, it's a YUM install, yes, Docker engine, and we'll put enter. So now they will do exactly the same procedure as happened with the updates. They will look for all the list, we'll download everything, we're gonna install, and that once that install, we know exactly what needs to be done. It's around eight, seven megabytes of total size that need to be installed, so be ready, will take around five, six minutes to install. So let's wait to, to install all these eight applications. Once that it finished, we're gonna go for the next step. So it's great, we just finished to install our Docker, but we didn't enable the service. To enable the service, we needed to run this following step. System TCL enable Docker service. And now we're gonna start this Docker service. Come here and start. Once that they start, we can clear the page and we can verify that it's really running well the Docker. To do it, we're gonna follow exactly the same style of program but we're gonna do a status and check it. And, in, and now they show for us that it's running, everything's okay, so it's not a problem. We can clear this page. Once that is clear, we can go and try to install the portrait. Basically, the portrait will be the way that you can manage all the application and see what uh, containers that you have, and this way it's basically easy for you. So to do the installation, first we need to create the volumes of our container. To do it, we're gonna do sudo docker volume create portrait underscore data. You can put only portrait, but for me, I prefer to put this name. So now we're gonna install the portrait. To do it, we're gonna do sudo docker run. The port for the portrait will be 9000, the name. He start always as a policy and a docker stock and the name of the volumes that we are using will be portainer slash c last and we're gonna run it. In this state, you will download out portrait image and we're going to do the installation. So let's wait to do it. Perfectly, they show this information so they finish doing the installation. We can access port 9000? No, because we did not allow that this port is open for the network. So now we can close this one. We don't need to use anymore. And we are back for our instance in Oracle Cloud. So we can come here in metrics only to see what uh, information that we have. And here in metrics, we can see what uh, steps that was doing. 
This one I presume that was the upgrade that we did and this one was the installation for the docker and the rest of the time the CPU was low. If you look, we didn't bottleneck any stage. I think that maximum that got it 6-7% and if you look, the maximum of run that uses 76%, so you have a little bit of gap. Anyway, they are running quite high, 46% as a standard run, but it's not a problem. As well, we can see how much they read, how much they use the internet and everything. So to configure our port forwardings, first thing we're gonna come here in virtual cloud network. In my case, I create only one virtual cloud network for all my instance. This is because I want to control everything in the same way and I want that one machine work with the application for the other machine. In this way, I can install a uh, proxy manager only in one machine and that they will uh, follow for the other's machine and it's easy for me. Basically, it's only to save my time. So I can come here in my subnet and come in default security and here is the port and all the protocol, what I allow to access and what I don't allow it to access. In this case, if I look here, I read allowed the port 9000, port 81 and 8 and 443. These three ports will be used for my uh, proxy manager. So 81 to access it and 8 for HTTP protocol and the 443 for HTTPS protocol. So my user is admin. I can define the password that I'm going to use exactly the same and I put create user. Once that created user, the red show this page. I don't need to save. I can dismiss it. I can open my primary and I can come here in container where it's only running the portrait. So I can come in stock and I will be able to create a new stock. And now what I need to do, I need to go in my proxy manager web page. To do it, I will open my proxy manager web page. I go to get start and go for the Docker Compose. The version that we're running is version 3. So because I'm using the Portrain version 2.9.2, so we'll run easily the version 3. I think that they're limited for version 3.9 or something looked like it, but uh, version 3 run no problems. So I can come here and copy it. Now I can come here my primary and I paste it. Now I define the name of my stock, where will be proxy manager here and now it's the ports I will have a look and see if I need to change anything I read aloud for access port 8, 81 and 443 so it's fine for me after that I finish configuration for this proxy manager I can remove the port 81 and port 9000 for my machines so I can remove it and remove this one and only create an external website and allow only the, these two ports to be able to access it. So I can come here and now I can change my host. Now I can change my ports, my user and my passwords. Remember, if you change your host, you need to change your host here. Otherwise, we have a conflict. Remember, if you change your host here, you need to change your host here. Otherwise, they will not work well and will have some problems. Now, the place that I want to save will be slash mmt slash ngrnx and I will use all this port for exactly the same. I don't need to create the folders in advance because once that I put to configure it, they will create automatically. Have everything set up the way that I want, I can come here and put deploy. Remember, this image will work only for ADM processor. If you're using the ARM, you need to use a different image for the database because this one will not work well. But uh, this one will be the topic for other video. You can use the Alpine Mariana database in this case, but don't worry about it. We're gonna come here and put the plug stack. Now we need to wait for them to download the image, do the first configurations, and once that uh, they finish to do everything, we can go for the next step. So let's wait. That's great, the, our proxy manager has been completed, so we can come here in container, we come here in app, and we come here in log. So we can check what's going on. All this one's info and renew complete, so we can try to access it. To be able to access it, we can come here in environmental, we can come here in primary, and we copy this IP address and paste here in our environmental. We only remove the HTTP because I don't want it and put update environment. Now we can come here in container and we can access port 81. I click here, they already appear my 81 port. 
so I can come here my proxy manager I can use this email and my password to change it so I can come here copy now it's the time that you need to set up your user it's the first one don't forget if you define the email you're gonna use this same email to make the login now I use my full name my nickname and my email address please don't try to send email for this email because they don't exist so will not work I come here and put save now they'll ask you to change your password we're gonna change it I use exactly the same that I find in the proxy manager website and I put save now they already appear your user you can create others users to administrate your proxy manager now we can in dashboard proxy host and we can add a different host in this way you can add some hosts for the doc DNS you can use the Cloudflare. you can use any dynamic DNS link for your website and start to configure it for the moment we don't have any other application but in the next videos we're gonna install other applications so guys I hope that you enjoyed this video in this one I go for the basics install docker install portrait install proxy manager this, these applications, this application will be the basic for the next videos. So if you don't have this one installed in the next video, you're gonna have a problem because you're gonna miss how to directly port, how to configure the rest. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.